Oh, uh, okay. How was um, how how was your first uh? I like I saw what you got on the exam. It wasn't that bad, right? It was not that good though. <laughs> yeah. I think we'll do our best. The reason why I think I was actually like uh, talking to this uh, with another client in terms of um doing code. <laughs> mm. Yeah. We, we we need more time to like really you know dig in. And yeah, like, we didn't have like, more, enough time last time. <laughs> Yeah, no worries. Um, for this next one, oh, oh yeah, you, were you able to send in your homework? Yeah, I submitted it uh, last night. I forgot okay. to send it to send it the other day. I was I was busy trying to read all those chapters. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah le for that, uh, yeah, let's um actually take a look at. Uh, were you able to send me the next homework? I I wasn't. I didn't get. Yeah, I sent it through you at Texas. I can't. I can't, I can't save it. It's just like when you try to save it, it doesn't, it doesn't happen. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll talk about it, but um, for today, did, did you want to talk about like how to start off like different things with Python? I know last time we, we went yeah. over like kind of like a tutorial, but um, yeah. what, what about this? Uh, I think it'll be more effective if you do it. I did send you the, the PDF, right? For my lessons. Let me see. Okay, let me take a look at which lesson. Because I know we covered we covered the basics like variables, right? Mm -hmm. Let's try to do uh, maybe let's see this one. Uh, the second one about uh, collections, collections, and then more about loops. What are you guys covering right now? Well, today we had a class. Okay. And uh, the class was about uh, data visualization. Oh, did you guys did the graphing? Well, he had the PowerPoints already, so he was just going over his PowerPoint, so we were just listening. Listening, it's hard to do coding. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, he was not coding anything. He just had like a, a prepared PowerPoint. So he was just talking about the PowerPoints, like maybe okay. 40, 43, 44 slides. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah. what, did, what did he show? Did he show like how to plot things? No, like, he didn't show. He was just talking about it. Oh, he was just talking about it. Okay. And then, um, but much of the time in class today, uh, he said we were going to do project a project. Okay, that's good. I think those are good hands on. Um, you know. Yeah. Like so I took a Python. picture of the slides where what he is looking for from the uh, from the project. How we should go about like the specifics of the of the project. Okay. Whatever whatever it is that we choose, and is then it, he gave us. Is it like an individual part project or like? It's gonna be group. So oh, group us good. That's even better. Okay. Yeah. So it's gonna be like about four people a group per group. That's good. Wow. Yeah. What's your guys' topics? So one of the girls. I don't know because this is not the group I was in last time. Okay, that's fine. But this girl. Yeah. She just sent a text in the uh, a note. Okay. And was thinking about um, choosing Medicare, Medi Medicare, Medicaid data quality. That's good. Um, I've done something like that before. It, it's like a peri uh, pharmaceutical, something like that. Okay. So then I'll just say yes to it. <laughs> yeah, go, go ahead. <laughs> it's actually not that bad. It doesn't matter what topic it is. What do you guys have oh, to do? Okay. What What do you guys have to do though? So we are supposed to let me see here. Uh, it's a six step process. We are form four to five to six project groups. Identify and select their analytical topic. Write okay. a one to two pages project proposal. Okay. Execute the project. Prepare a PowerPoint summary report. 
present the, the project to the class Saturday, December 5, 2020. Uh, so you guys have to um, prepare like a proposal? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so for, for that, uh, what do you guys want to do with the Medicare or Medicare? Like what's something you, you guys want to analyze? Well, the girl just proposed it. Nobody has said anything. Okay. Why don't I, the, I actually have like a project. Maybe you can tell them something similar to it. Okay. You're going to tell me what you got in mind. And I'm gonna... Okay. Let me actually share something. Cause um, this is like something, you know, cause um, it, it's always good to like, know maybe something that, that has been done. <laughs> mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the, um, I, I guess. And what, I like healthcare staff. So. What, what's up? What, what do you guys have to do? Like, what's the objective of the, of the project? Like, what do you guys have to do? Okay, so let me see what else. Do you have to analyze like a data set and then and graph a few things? Is it is that what that is? I, okay, so here is what it's talking about. The objectives okay. uh, is like this. Enhance the acquisition of an analytics knowledge through project initiation, execution, and reporting. Second, apply class lecture in homework learnings to solve some real world business problems. Oh, and business then, problems. Yeah. And then acquire practical knowledge to extract actionable insights from the data and tell compelling stories. I got it. Okay. And so it's kind of similar to what, what I've done. Okay. So, like, what you have to do is kind of like do some statistics on like some data. And then from that, maybe you can graph. And then from the graph, you can probably create like some conclusions, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, kind of like what you did before, um, you know, in R, we, we did some statistics, quartiles, you know, and and some graphing stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then from that graph, maybe maybe you, you can infer like, oh, maybe there's a pattern, you know, in, um, in like, uh, for example, like maybe in Medicaid or Medicare, some or pharmaceutical, mm -hmm. you you can look at like a graph, and then from that graph, maybe is there a relationship, a positive correlation? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, something something like that. Uh, I don't. I, the thing is, uh, it's kind of early. Like, what does this do? Um, is this like throughout the entire class? Yes, throughout the entire class. So we don't <laughs> submit it until. December 5th. When, oh, that's good. When okay. Uh, okay. Um, maybe maybe I'll just show you a few things that like uh, people have done. Okay. And, and then you can propose to them like, oh, this this is a project that um seems pretty interesting. Okay. And then uh, let's see, let's see one. Okay. Can I share my screen? Yes. Let me just um show you what what other people have done. Okay, so one one thing is uh, where is it? So there, there's this program right here. Let me just exit mm -hmm. out these guys. There, there's this program called um, pharmaceutical. This is something we did. Do you see this? Are you, can you hear me? Mm hmm Okay. So um, yeah, so this is a pharmaceuticals. Kind of, kind of like uh, maybe something uh, you guys can do. I'm, I'm gonna show you a few things. There's another one called Pi Pi Schools. Okay. But because you, you were talking about healthcare. So I guess, look at this kind of. Yes. It, right. It brought into my mind. I was like, oh, maybe you can do something. So, and then what you can do, what I did here, maybe you can propose to them is um, you guys can look at like some data online. And then, like, uh, like from this data, you can analyze, like, you know, for this one, for example, they're, they're talking about some like mouse experiment. And then, like, you know, the very first thing you would do is, you know, we'll talk about it, you know, again, like once you guys, um, you know, get to it. Right now, it's just you're proposing something to them. So maybe like you can uh, get this data. So this is the data right here. This guy right here. Mm -hmm. So like, I, I got this online. Uh, there's just so much things available um, that you can like pick from. You can do like, you can. Yeah, do, you see this website that you want to. Yeah, it is one of the uh, the websites that you, you had on the PowerPoint that he says that this guy actually, if you yeah, go to the, mm -hmm. is, it, is it this one? The Kego thing. 
Oh, the Kaggle, yeah. Kaggle as well. I have, I have that actually. Um, this guy. This guy? Mm hmm. Yeah, right here. Kaggle. You're right. It was oh. one of the websites you had. You can, you can go to like here, data sets, and then like search whatever data set you want. You could go like help. And look, there's a bunch of them. You can do like tech surveys, mental health coverage, health analytics. Does he want? Does he only want you guys to uh, to go to Kaggle? There's a there's a bunch of other ones. No, there were a bunch of others. GitHub. I saw five thirty eight. You could also yeah. try try and go to this one. This one is a good one. Um, UCI machine learning. If you go to this one, a lot of people use this in um, in California. What do you call it? Uh, this is for uh, the, the, not only in California, but uh, this is the one in the, that we use all the time. Machine learning UCI. I'll I'll send this to you actually here. Okay, because yeah, because there was something like CS, CSI or something. CSI or UCI. UCI. CSI. U, U, UCI, I think. Okay, so it mu it must be this one, the the UCI one, machine learning repository. Yeah. Okay, I'll I'll send these to you actually. Like uh, you already you you already know Kaggle, so that's good. But uh, you can also go to this the UCI. But like if you look over here, there's so many different ones. Mm -hmm. Like you could go heart disease, you know, maybe wine quality, bank marketing, something related to business. Um, you can even go forest fires. This is something I like. You could go to the sun. This is nice. Um, you know, if something interests you guys, just. You could even go to just, where is it here? Um, if you go to view all data sets, like right here, here you go. They, ha they have them in like alphabetical order. There's so many different ones. I think what it is is what, what interests your group, you know? <laughs> and yeah. maybe but I'm gonna support it because I, I feel more comfortable with the healthcare things. Yeah, there's a lot of than, them. Yeah, then if someone comes up with Walmart stuff, retail, retail stuff, I'm not like a fan of them. I don't know. I've never. Okay. You could always, uh, which one? Like, if you say healthcare, just say, just tell them there's a lot of um, data for healthcare. You can analyze like uh, different types of diseases if they're. Uh, you know, like that some trends because like right, once, yeah. once you click on this guy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it gives you different like attributes. You can analyze it from, you know, like the people age, mm -hmm. you know, like how many people uh, get uh, like heart disease. Uh, mm -hmm. Things like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then different, uh, you know, patient number, if they're like it says they're benign or you know, number of years as a smoker, all these different factors. Mm -hmm. So that, that's an easy one. Um, there's a lot of data for it. And like, in terms of uh, like uh, when you're gonna graph it, uh, once you have that data, like once you download the data here, you just, mm -hmm. uh, you just import them in Python. Like, you, still, you, you, okay. you, you still, I still don't know how to use Python. Yeah, but we're gonna learn like right now that they just want you to propose something, right? Yeah, they want you just to propose something. Yeah. So yeah. what I would do is um just talk about well obviously talk about how to uh you know how to do all the Python things. Uh once we get to that's why I wanted to actually like go over some of these, like how to yeah. mm -hmm. or, uh you know this pro programming. Yeah, because I can either support that one she has or I can come up with another healthcare thing. Yeah. And then that way we can have two things. That how's how's the group's um, experience with Python? I think, I think. Are they good? Based on, based on how they introduce themselves today. Yeah. They are people who, yeah, they are people, some, some, so actually there is someone who is really good. Uh, like computer science guy. Oh, he's already, he already knows this then. <laughs> yeah, he's the computer science guy. The other girl, she was talking about uh, how she does this data stuff at her work. Oh, that's even better. Yeah, so the, she does data science as well. And then the other person was talking about chemistry. 
Okay, that that may be not too. That's uh, physics related. So, okay, that's fine. Uh, there's two people. Um, you can definitely uh, you know uh, ride that wave if because they already know it. <laughs> you just get. You just have to like work with them and say you know how you. Yeah, can but continue. I don't want them to run away from healthcare staff because healthcare staff are things that I have passion about. Yeah, I tell am, them that. T tell them about that, and then try. I'm, try I'm, to, I'm very passionate about healthcare. I try tell them that um that there's a that you have a motivation, you have like a passion for it. Um, I feel you feel like if we do something about healthcare, it's gonna. You don't want people to come up with movie things, those kind of things. Like but those those are yeah like. The one thing you can tell them is we need to find a topic that matters. And I feel like right now, yeah. healthcare is something that, you know, we can definitely can find we, a lot Can of we find about. something now so that I can propose to my group? Yeah, um, here, go to UCI. Can, I go to his, can, can you try to go to his website? Uh, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post it in the chat. Okay. Try, try, uh, just click on the, on the link and see if you can, um, you know, browse this with me. Uh, Okay, you see, is that did you see the I, website? Uh, I am in, uh, you brought me Kaggle. You can go to Kaggle uh, if you if you wanted to go but to Kaggle. But I want to see the, the uh, UCI, where is the UCI? I, I put it on the chat, can you click on it? It's on the chat. Oh, oh it's on the chat? Yeah, click on the chat. Why don't you do something about um, health insurance coverage? This is actually a very popular one because it's yes, like, things like that. I like I like this is like business related, right? Health insurance yeah. coverage, mm -hmm. Affordable Care Act. <laughs> you, you know, yeah, stuff lot, like that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to be said about this one. <laughs> Before and after Affordable Care Act. <laughs> yeah. So like maybe maybe we can yeah. This is actually not a bad one because then you can. You can um, assess this data and say. Yeah, okay. this one he had this website. You you're right. This one right here, the one you have on the on the chat. Yeah. He gave us that. He gave us this website. It was one of the websites he gave. Yeah, us. it's very popular. If you, you see our repository. Uh, did you want to go to that, or did we could actually look for our, uh, something on, about healthcare? Yeah. Uh, health insurance. Coverage. I'm pretty sure the same exact one is in here. Oh, uh, happened. <laughs> All right here. Come on. Insurance coverage. Why is it doing that? Okay. UCI uh, data set. Well, here you go. Health insurance stuff, health insurance. Well, there's not much. I, I guess Kaggle had a better one. Okay. This one is just about insurance. I don't think it's health insurance, it's insurance. I would probably show them this one in Kaggle, health insurance coverage. Okay. And then like, look, if you look over here, it says, how was the affordable care change the rate of citizens with healthcare insurance coverage. With, and then, you know, some questions that can be asked is which states observe the greatest decline in their uninsured rate? Did mm -hmm. those states expand Medicaid program? Look, there's Medicaid here. Coverage and or implement a health insurance market. What do you predict will happen to the nationwide uninsured rate in the next five years? That's awesome. I think this is a really great one. Yeah, I like that one. So yeah, just show them this website. Um, if you go to, I'm going to paste this again in the chat. Okay. If you go to this exact one in Kaggle, like it, mm -hmm. look, it shows you, uh, this is some, this is the thing that you have to download. In my computer, I can't download these ones. Okay, so let me see. And it's a, it's a very small file, which is not, which is not bad. It has only 14 columns. And another one, let's try look for another one. Maybe there's something else. Health analytics. 
Oh, this is a bigger one, I think. Yeah, this one, this one's a bigger one. If you take a look at, so this is only one file. Yeah, that one's only one file. What is it? Health insurance cross cell prediction. <laughs> this is another one. This is nice. Yeah, this one's a little, I think this is, this one's not that good because you guys have to, because like right now you, you guys are not doing anything, any predictions, right? It's just, you have to visualize the data, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. This one is, a, oh, what about this one? Um, maybe this one's a nice one. Let's fight COVID-19 by adapting to a healthy diet. <laughs> Let's say the inspiration. Uh, oh, th there's a bunch. There's a bunch for this. So what? What? Why are they trying to analyze in this? Yeah, maybe you could do this one. This is also a nice one because um, this guy is saying uh, that you can uh, project different food in like different places of the world um, and then how the, you can prevent them from getting disease. Mm -hmm. So yeah, try to look into this and maybe Oh, this is nice. This guy is saying from this data set, we can gather info regarding diet. With, and then like, you know, um, he's saying that depending on your diet, it can lower your COVID infection rate. <laughs> That's a good one too. Yeah, yeah I know, but this one seems interesting. Um, it's always the interesting ones that like, you know, I don't, I don't, like it's up to you, whatever you, you want to pick. <laughs> I, I kind of put this in the chat as well. <laughs> So okay. yeah, that's an interesting one. Diet data sets, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, he analyzed like all the different, you know, nations of the world. And then depending on their diet, he, he went through and kind of projected whether they're more prone or not prone. It's really nice. So yeah, this one is a good one because there's a lot of data on it. It's not just one um, CSV. Okay, let's look for another one. What about restaurant market, no, national health and nutrition examination? Oh, this one's a good one. Let's look at this one. Uh, let's see. Demographic. Okay, it has like every type of disease, kind of like one of those questionnaires where like depending on your family history and then like, you know, um, your habit and then diet. Um, if you're more prone to uh, like one disease versus the other, you, you, that kind of questionnaire. Mm -hmm. And this is just a compilation of like a lot of those guys. So, so this one, um, I'm wondering if they, and then like, you know, depending on your, all of those demographics, uh, mm -hmm. which one is more prone to what? Another interesting one, right? Uh, let me see what the motivation is. And there's a lot you can graph with this. You can graph, you know, uh, if you're more prone to blood pressure, uh, or depending on your blood pressure, these are like all the categorical stuff. Mm -hmm. And then like, you know, you can tell them like for each one of these, for each one of these um, diseases, uh, hepatitis A, B, cholesterol, whatever, um, uh, you know, like heart disease, you can like graph uh, what is the projection of blood pressure, you know, body weight, um, whether you, you uh, your, what is it called? Your height, maybe your race, sleep disorder, you know, weight history. Mm -hmm. There's so many things there. I think this is a good one as well. So I'll put this, like you can graph like different things. 
you always you don't want to be like doing a or picking a data set that where, where you're limited it's always better to have more than what you need <laughs> than, than what you need gotcha. yeah because then uh, you're gonna run out of things to talk about let me see and then here's another one so what about what about let's see uh let's see health nutrition population statistics health that was a nutrition one this is kind of related um data set on heart attack possibility is there like a particular disease you're, that you want to analyze? Well, it doesn't matter, any disease. Okay, this is a, a specific one, that's a, there's one with mental health and suicide rates. Um, there's also oh, one- Oh, that's a good one too. A suicide rates one, okay. Mm -hmm. So for this one, um, it says here, what, what are they relating it to? Uh, so for suicide, the factors are education, labor, uh, what else are they saying? And then maybe like politics. And so there's different things that you can graph mm -hmm. uh, and see if there's like a correlation, uh, you know, between these guys, uh, facilities, and there's a bunch of things maybe you could do. And then, yeah, you have different countries as well. Okay, I'll, I'll put this in the chat as well. I mean, there's so many different things that you, I mean, your group can like probably pick one of these. <laughs> right. It just depends on like what you guys are most passionate about. Uh, uh, and what else is there? Um, country health indicators. What is this country health indicators? Oh, there's another COVID one. So this data set combines multiple open data sets for COVID-19 cases and deaths, death causes, food sources, um, vaccine stats, clo uh, school closures, people, society facts. Oh, that's not bad. There's only one though, there's only one data. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Death growth, cancer percentage. First one confirmed, country, region. That's not bad. Let's look at another one. This one's a little bit limited. Um, fraud detection analysis. No, no, it's not. Healthy life expectancy. What about this one? Let's take a look at this one. Uh, okay. To inspiring people in and around Northeast uh, to lead more active and healthy lives through a wide range of sporting, leisure, cultural and learning activities. Let's see. Not, this one isn't really that good. Most of their data is categorical. Yeah, most of it is categorical. Let's take a look at other ones. Next page. Mm, okay. Uh, oh, this one's a nice one. Honeybee. Someone else was doing this. I, I remember someone else did something about honeybees. Mm, behavior risk factor. Um, international data sets. Can pizza be healthy? <laughs> what? What is this? <laughs> Let me click on this. That seems interesting. So depending on the pizza you have, um, you can analyze like if it's healthy or not. <laughs> okay. It, it seems limited though. <laughs> it's too specific. Um, I think we have a lot already. Let's try to pick five more. Um, what else is there? The oh, this this one's a little world sanitation and health. Uh, Get them boys outside and spread of disease. We need to make sure everyone has proper um, measures required. Different countries have different uh, facilities. Oh, th this is a nice one. Uh, this gives you like what whether you know to analyze a city. 
in a population, whether if it's like clean or not. Mm -hmm. uh, it's whether you get more diseases from you know from being a, in, living in a in a dirty I guess like environment mm -hmm. versus like a clean environment. Um, so you know, and I think that's a good one. Um, there's a lot of a uh, there's a lot of data for it. You have data for hand washing and soap, you know, and there's uh, maybe some with sanitation services, depending on what country you're at. So I'll, I'll send you this one. Okay, thank you. It's on the chat as well. Let's, let's take a look at medical cost for start personal data sets. Uh, what about women healthcare? I mean, maybe this is too specific. <laughs> you know, uh, hospitals and beds in you know, healthcare costs, funeral data, student alcohol consumption. Nah, probably not a good one. Um, uh, what, what's another good one? Mm, chronic disease indicators. This sounds like a, a good one. So let's see. There's only one data set though. One is not enough. Uh, let's see, because they're only, uh, it seems like there's only alcohol in this one. Is there one with another one? Okay, that's not a good one. It's only the alcohol. One like, one like big data. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Healthcare costs, student alcohol consumption, mental health poll, human development report. Hmm, uh, let's see, health insurance data. There's a bunch of those um, biochemical, anthro, demographic traits, and data science for COVID 19. So, good. let me see, uh, fire says local data for better health. Fire said local data for better health. Let's look at this one. Prevention. No, the one thing about this is it doesn't really have that much like numerical. Like, when you're looking at these guys, it's hard to find one where there's a bunch of numerics. Both, mm -hmm. Most of them are, are categorical, which is tough. Okay. Let's, try, let's try to look at this other guy. Uh, let's see. The UCI one. View all data sets. I want something numerical. What else? Um, let's see. Regression. Oh, regression sounds like a good one, right? Yes. So let's do something about regression. And then uh, maybe. It's life sciences, right? I think it's life sciences. Yeah, it is a life science. Okay. Okay. So, are you looking at this thing? Like, how how you factor how you get to this point is you click on this guy, and then you click on view all data sets right here. Okay. And then, like on the side here, you can highlight and filter. Like, if you look at this, it turns yellow. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, that's how you filter this guy out because there's so many that's why. Um, what about let's see this one bone marrow transplant children? Ooh, this is an interesting one. Oh, success and failure of like bone marrow transplant is that something interesting? Mm hmm. Okay, so like sex, like whether you get like a successful one, it's also a classification or regression. Um, so that that's a classification. What about a regression one? Though? Let me see. Oh, you can plot like you know their age or. What else can you type? Mm. Time and days. Survival time. I don't know. 
it's hard to um like it's better to do it when it's a uh, regression what are you plotting for that though yeah i think i think we're gonna use regression not not classification yeah you talked about regression okay let's do regression is like a better because there's actually something that you can plot like a numerical number that you can plot uh heart failure clinical records parkinson telemonitoring uh estimation of obesity levels based on eating habits and physical condition oh this one sounds like a good one so this one is a data set with like from uh, mexico peru and colombia you, you can track like uh if they're obese or not uh does it give you height and weight because you can always look at bmi yeah you, you can calculate bmi if it gives you height and weight yeah to know if someone is obese or not yeah i think this is a good one because in this sense then um the line that you could plot can be like the different type you know their weight their normal weight um and then um, whether whether they meet like a certain BMI if they're if they're healthy. So I'll put this over here. I'm I'm gonna put this in the chat. Okay. And what else is there? There's a drug review data set. Let's look at this one. What kind what kind of um, attributes does it have? Date, useful for number of users of found them. Patient review, number, name of condition. It gives you the rating of the drug. It gives you the rating of the drug. And then the uh, number of people that use the drug. What's the purpose of this? Oh, it's a drug review. Ah, you can't really do much with that one. Hmm. Multivariate. Uh, let's look at this one. Mm, this gives you once in, uh, this is a complicated one. Let's not do this one. Heart failure. Okay, here's a good one. There's actually 13 different things that you can plot. Oh, good. So it gives you all these different ones, the, the age of the patient, and it gives you the um, whether they're anemic or not, whether the person has hypertension or high blood pressure or not. Um, it also tells you if they're male and female, it tells you the percentage of blood leaving the heart. It tells you the level of serum creatinine in the blood. It tells you if the patient smokes or not. And follow up period. I wonder what that means. But this is an easy one. What, what you can do with this guy is kind of just like, because you need to know uh, uh, whether you can, like, you know, with all this, you can plot like uh, what, what is the level of serum for most people, right? Mm -hmm. Or like different numerical. And yeah, I think this is a good one for heart failure. I'll just give you this one as well. So you have one for obesity, you have one for heart failure. And then let's take a look at the other ones. And what metabolic reaction that was this? Protein detergent. Um, let me see. What is this one? Oh, there's, oh, I see, that's a lot of attributes. Oh, there's 65, wow. Let's look at this, early biomarkers of Parkinson. Oh, what happened? Uh, okay. There's only three, there's this one is 26. 
Okay, so for the Parkinson one, it tells you uh, whether uh, what their age is and mm -hmm. it tells you whether they're male or female. And then this also tells you the, I don't even know what these other ones mean. Uh, a nonlinear measure of fundamental frequency variation. I think it's too, uh, I think this is too theoretical. <laughs> Let's not do this one. Uh, okay, so you, you have one for obesity, you have one for heart disease. Uh, not that one. I thought there'd be more here. It's, it doesn't seem like there's a lot actually. <laughs> physical science. Let's look at physical science. You guys, you don't, you don't want to do anything unrelated to, um, to, to medical, right? Well, it can be something else, but I just don't like retail stuff and, this <laughs> is, and the movie things. Movie things suck, you know. There's no motivation. It's yeah, like, like there's so why, why much would you do it, you know? going on. I can't even tell head out of tell so. myself. <laughs> yeah, tell them no, because <laughs> it needs to be something that everyone agrees, you know. And then, and then yeah, there has to be yeah. some impact. Like, what does your what does your data mean? Like, is this going to help someone? Yeah, if data is readily available, that kind of thing. We got a lot of data. There's, there's, a, there's a lot for this guy. There's a, there's a lot. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at another one. Let's uh, let's just look at. What is? Okay. Let's uh, take a look at disease. Disease is. Let's look at this new plant disease. Reply. Reply to. Let's see, large, I want a large one, CSV. It health. can be education, can be population, things like that. Story sound database, no, it doesn't sound right. Let's look at just disease. Classification, no, it has to be a regression one. Regression. Oh, here, logistic regression to predict heart disease. <laughs> this seems like an interesting okay. one. Oh, here you go, BMI. I knew it. BMI is in here. Then how many? There's 16 columns, okay. Oh, there's a lot of um, categories in here, but most of these are just true or false. The, the one that's uh, numerical is this cholesterol one. Oh, okay. And age, age is also uh, numerical. Uh, it's fine. I think it's it's workable. Yeah, I'll send you this one because the one thing is it's, it's already uh, so it gives you this really uh, descriptive synopsis of like what you can do with the data. So take a look at this one. This guy right here. Okay. All right. Then you can do like statistics to it already. Like this, uh, this Kaggle one I sent you, logistic regression. Mm -hmm. uh, heart disease is the model, but this is going to predict heart disease. Analyzing the heart disease, classifying the heart disease, cardiovascular disease, um, logistic regression, heart disease prediction. Let's take a look at this one again. Um, it's kind of similar. You can do chronic disease indicators, chronic kidney disease, ocular disease recognition. Uh, well, yeah, let's look at the chronic disease indicators. I don't really like this one. This is not that much of a data. Chronic kidney disease. So it gives you the age. It also gives you what is B, 
Oh, BP. Okay, it gives you the BP. Mm -hmm. What else is there? It gives you SG, whatever that is. And AL. I don't even know what these mean. <laughs> SURBC. Uh, PCCB. Is, does this make, <laughs> this is about like kidney disease. Okay. It gives you like a bunch of um, uh, like columns, labels, so that you can classify whether they have like a chronic kidney disease or not. Okay, I think I'll just give you this one because then, you know, it gives you the set at least to pick from, whichever one your group wants to do. <laughs> And the heart disease one is the one that's the most common one though. Like in terms of heart disease. Uh, let's see. Oh, someone already analyzed it. Someone already analyzed the data here. <laughs> Look at this. Someone already analyzed this guy. Like they, they already wrote something about it. Okay. That's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Oh, you can even do a heat map. This, this is one of those things that you can do. Look at this. So you remember we did like correlation in R? Like correlation. Mm -hmm. This is what, what you what you can do in um in Python. Like depending on like if there's a correlation between their age and then like cholesterol, mm -hmm. you can line it up and see like, oh, there's a negative correlation, positive. And look at the plots that you can do. There's so many plots you can do, right? These are all the plots. So I'll, I'll actually show you this and see if you guys can uh, like, you know, you can show this to the group. Okay. Look at it. There's so many things you can do already. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Save this one. This is a good one. Um, this one is a good one. And look at the um, different things you could do. Uh, count for chest type. You can do. You can do something like this. Whatever this is. You can do a pie chart. You can do this guy a bar plot, a line graph of the different age. You know, like depending if you're like if you're young, if you have a, so you can do you can do a lot to this guy. So, and what's nice about this is it sh it shows you how to present the data in a very um, graphical way. Because okay. you know sometimes like right now you, you probably don't know how you want to present the data, right? But at least like with this, you have some idea. It's like if you're given age, if you're given age, you could do this. And if you have like um, age range, what else is there? You can do this, you can do this, you can do like this, you can do this. There's a lot, yeah? And it gives you the data set already. Okay. Uh, let me see the input. The input for this is um, right here. A heart CSV. If you go to the notebook, this is a notebook, but um, I think you should just go to this guy, the, the resource. But there's a lot though, there's a lot you can do. Uh, you know, like, uh, Someone wrote this, obviously. Maybe I can download it. We can play around with it. Uh, let me see. Okay. Notebook. Oh, no. Let me go back. OK. Uh, let's see. Is that enough? That's kind of like a lot. <laughs> 
Yeah, we can try these ones. Yeah, the last one is the one that I want to say. This one is a good one. That, that was the best one, I think. Oh, yeah, the um, analyzing the heart disease. Yeah, because it gives you like kind of like an overview mm -hmm. of what you can do. Okay. Uh, we'll, just, we'll just download that later on. How do you download the notebook? And then for the input, we can just, uh, I guess we'll download the input like this, yeah. Are you in Kaggle right now? So I think sometimes for me, it doesn't allow me to download this. Yeah, actually I, I clicked on the analyzing the heart disease. Yeah, try, try to um, download it. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Because for me, it doesn't allow me to download it. Just put this in here. Here you go. But um, let's go to the notebook one. Let me click on this one. Okay, here's the notebook. Download code. Oh, here we go. They downloaded the code. Okay, good. Okay, let's look at the let's look at this data actually. Okay. So I downloaded this guy. It's right here. Um, I'm wondering if I have to. I probably have to download the data so let me download that ah, see it doesn't allow me to download it it's okay let's just take a look at it so here's the here's the notebook right now mm -hmm. and it has a bunch of these data sets uh, And then all you have to do, like, you know, like after do, doing like things in uh, Python is really simple. Like you just have to import these guys. That's what they say here. And then the next thing is we have to actually read the same way as in R, we have to read like this file. What is this? Let's go learn pre-processing. Can I import name import it? Uh, I probably don't have that one. We can just analyze this guy. I think this is an easy one. Okay, uh, I think uh, for that, just try to like download the data and then, uh, let me know mm -hmm. if uh, likes it and we can move along with how to analyze it. All right. But I guess for now, uh, let's try to see if we can do some things in Python, like kind of like know and learn the basics of graphing. Right. And analyzing data. So like for this one, you know, like when you're trying to, uh, you remember in like R, you had to like type in library and import some libraries. Yeah. The same way as in Python, you have to actually do this. And then you have to just type in import. That's how you do it. You type in import and then the name of the, the library. Yeah. So this one says like pandas, yeah? And then NumPy. And this one is, um. And then so for, for this one, uh, that's what you have to do. And then like the very next thing is after you get the CSV file, kind of like in R, you have to put it, you have to like import that CSV file into Python. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then so, uh, how you do that is 
you assign it a particular like data uh, variable. So this is your variable right here. And then this is my other variable. And then um, from here, uh, maybe there's an easy one or, now let's just look at this one. Uh, so from, from that, uh, like the next thing is you have to read the CSV file. And so how you do that is mm -hmm. use the pandas. Pandas is used to read like a CSV file. And then, so how you do that is you just put in like pandas and PD is what you use in this case. So pandas that read, and you've seen this before, right? Read underscore CSV. Yeah. And then, so um, after that, mm -hmm. uh, and like the name of the data, this guy inside here. And then like, maybe you wanna, like maybe you wanna combine the data first. So let, let's just take a look at what they are first so that, you know, you, you know what we're talking about. So what I have there here is like two datas. Like one of them is mouse data. So I'm, I'm gonna output what these guys are. So mouse data uh, is this guy, yeah? So I have like mouse ID, drug regimen, uh, sex, age, months, and weight. Then the other one is study data. Let's take a look at this. This other one is, it gives me the mouse ID and it gives me like tumor volume and all these other ones, right? But if you have that and you want to combine them, if you take a look at like both of these guys, uh, the way that you can combine two data sets is using uh, combined data. Uh, uh, and then so combine that as the name of my variable. And how you combine these two is you just do panda.merge. I can't see the screen. You can't see the screen? Yeah, I just have the one that has pharmaceutical programs. Let me see. Huh? Which one are you looking at right now? The one that has pharmaceuticals program. Let me share. Do you see this? Do you see this? You, you don't, what do you see on my screen? Just nothing. That's a little weird. How does that work? Uh, let me share. Another way, portion of screen. What about now? If you say that you have started sharing, uh, screen sharing. Okay, but you should wait a bit. What about now? Still the same. That's weird. It's just black screen. Okay, uh, you don't see the pharmaceutical program? It's gone. I don't see it anymore. That's weird. What did you see earlier? The pharmaceuticals program. I had it earlier. Okay. Um, what about now? Now I have the picture. What it's about this? Picture. Now you. Now it's the black screen is back. The same that you started sh screen sharing. But I oh, don't black. have. I don't have what access to what you're sharing. That's super weird. Uh, usually, it doesn't. Let me see. Let me send you a picture of my screen. It's probably a connection or issue or something. Yeah, I think so. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Okay. Take a picture. <laughs> I just read. Let me take a picture and then you see what I'm what I'm having here. Okay. So this didn't happen last time. I wonder if it's a connection issue.
What are you doing? Okay. So I have sent it. Okay. Let me <laughs> check my phone somewhere else. Actually. Yeah, it will be the last one because I'll send you a bunch of stuff. Where did this stuff go? Can you send it to my email? Mm -mm, I sent it to your phone. I, I texted it. Okay. Can you send it to my email though? I do email. Do a, like a, a, a screenshot. Yeah. Whatever the screenshot is. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Let me know when you send it. Or maybe, let's see. Okay. You send it? So I'm going to send it. Or maybe we can just like go through something from your screen <laughs> if this doesn't work. Where's my snake? Uh, what is that? I'm saying, where's my snake? Yes. What's happening right now? Did you take a screenshot? Yeah, no, so I'm going to in your head. You're sending it? 
Mm, okay. Let me see. Put Okay, I've sent it. Let me see. Uh, you still can't see my screen. Let me go back. Huh? Let me let me take off the stuff I was doing on. Okay, I think I just got I got your email. Yeah. Okay. So I am back now, and what I'm seeing here. So I started screen sharing. That's that's the only thing you can see. Yeah, this this is all I can see. I had in earlier on I had the uh, pharmaceuticals program screen, and then now this is the only thing you can see right right now. Yeah, right now this is what I can see. Let me try another route. What about now? What do you see now? Still the same thing. Hmm, that's super weird. Try to, can you try re-logging back in? Sure. Yeah, I think that's probably... Yeah, let's, let me... What about now? Ah, the pharmaceuticals program is here. Awesome, yeah. I think it was just a connection or so, something flew. Yeah, it was a flu. It's very clear now. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, next time we'll do that. Like, we'll just re-log back in. Okay. Yeah. So, um, if you can, uh, maybe, like, do you have a uh, Python on, like Jupyter Notebook? Let me, let me, let me start it up. Okay. And maybe we can go through this together. Let me actually, uh, we can probably just give you, let me just go through like one of these guys. Let's see. Where did I put that thing? Uh, lessons, there you go, pandas. Intro to pandas merging, and then there's APIs. Yeah, I guess we can go through pandas. Pandas is the one that will help us do these things. Uh, let's see. Do you have it open? Okay. Do you have Jupyter Notebook open? Mm -hmm, yeah. Okay. Let me just download this other guy. Um, Matplotlib. Oh, that's, that's not the one. Oh, here you go. Is it still loading? 
I can't I can't see my toolbar now. You which one? My own toolbar, like where I need to click on Panda on um sorry, not Panda on Python. Uh, okay. Were you able to go to that um that Anaconda prompt? Hold on. Okay. Okay, here we go. Just a moment. Oh, it's empty. Why is it empty? That's weird. Oh, I don't know. That? All I have is your screen. I can't. I can't get my own screen. Uh, try to minimize it. Okay. Minimize my screen. Wow, it's so clickable. What? Okay, let's see. There you go. There, that makes sense. Okay. Okay, so now I can see my screen. This is the one, okay. Are you, are you able to uh, like partition the screen? Yeah, yeah. No, I can go there. Okay. Try to, uh, yeah, open Jupyter Notebook. Well, the Jupyter notebook is what I couldn't open the other day. All I got was um, okay. Uh, I can show you how to do that. So if you, if I, I got spider instead of seeing Jupyter. So if you look at like your, could try search for Anaconda prompt. Okay, I have the Anaconda prompt app. You have Anaconda prompt. Okay, and then type in um, Jupyter notebook. The Jupyter notebook. Yeah. Yeah, type in Jupyter Notebook. What is this? Go back. Is there only one? And then enter. It says Jupyter Notebook is not recognized as an internal or external command. Okay. Notebook program. Try, try, to, try to share your screen. Oh, okay. So I'm type Jupyter and then space notebook. Okay. Better space notebook. You, you can't. Do, uh, you, have, you have to copy it. You have to type it again. I have to type it again. Yeah. Okay. So Jupiter space notebook. And then enter. Yeah. Enter. There you go. I think it's working now. I returned my machine. It came, but I had to send it back. Oh, you, you got you returned it. Oh, did you get a new one? 
Yeah, I, I returned it because the keyboard is not clear. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, I think uh, I, I remember I, I sent you, or we talked about a good one. Try to get one, something similar to that one. Yeah, so I'm gonna get another one. Okay. A different type. Let's try to, maybe I'll cover matplotlib first and then the pandas. Okay. This is the important one, the matplotlib stuff. Summary statistics, okay. Something related to what we did before. Samples, okay. Okay, yeah, this, this seems like it's easy. Actually, maybe I'll send these to you because um, and try to go to um, desktop or I'll try to go to, uh, try to go to new up top on the right side. On the right side says new. Uh, like upload and new says new on the on the top. I don't see that. I only see right, right, here, right here. Click on the new. Upload on, on on my right or on your right? On on, on your right. It says new, right? Do you, do you see my annotation? This guy? No, on my, on my right, it's just, um, okay, let me move the picture. The picture had it covered. <laughs> okay, so new. Yeah. Yeah, the picture covered it. Uh, it's all okay. good. Okay, and then click on Python 3. Okay, let's okay. start something here. Okay, so now you have something there. Um, I want okay. you to, like, I'm going to share my screen. And then let's okay. talk about, like, uh, let's see. Let's talk about like how you can do some things in Python. So let's talk about like uh, summary statistics first. Do you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I have to send this to you though. That's the thing. Uh, so let me, let's go to your email first and then I'm going to send you some, uh, these lessons. The, re okay. the reason why is uh, so that you can uh, practice while I'm doing this because all of the all of the data is inside the lesson. Oh, okay. Like, you know, remember we had to do CSV and stuff in R, it's kind of similar. Okay. So I'll send this to you first. Uh, let me just do this. And where did that go? Let's put it right here. All right, perfect. Uh, I'll just send it to the email that you, this guy. Okay. The screenshot. This one there. You might need a you might you might need because this one is forty five megabits megabytes. So I'm gonna I have to give you access to it. It's more than what's required or what's the limit of uh, Google. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Try to um, let me see. Edit. Edit. Maybe you don't need to get that. Okay, let me know when you get it. All right, so I guess first of all, um, before, before, you know, while you wait for that, uh, try to type these dependencies. So what we call it dependencies in Python is just a way for us to, to access different functions, kind of like similar to um, R, right? Mm -hmm. So try to type them like what you see here. Yeah, just type them in the first cell block. So do I type this? Okay, this one's here. Yeah. Okay, let me see. Let 
just rerun all of these ones. Uh, restart, run. Okay. Can you, can you check your email if you got the what, what I sent? Okay. It should be like a really huge file, 45 megabytes, or relatively big. It should say a lesson dot zip. Zero lessons. And then, and then the expanders is uh, matplotlib. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, can, can you can you um, extract that and then put it in your desktop? Yeah, these are good because um the, this pandas matplotlib and APIs you're gonna be using this a lot. <laughs> I don't know if he's gonna. How do I extract this? Huh? How do I extract this? Let me let me see your screen. Let me yeah show your screen. Because when I when I clicked, I yeah. think I kind of opened the. Can, can you share your screen? I want to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, try to go back, um, go, go back to not the, not here, but to the email, go back to the email. Go back to the email, okay. Yeah. Click on that one, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, click on that. And then click on the, um, click on that right there. You should have a download, the down button, the down button. Yeah, click on that one, yeah. Okay. Okay, I think, I think it's already downloading. Yeah, it is. Try, try go to. Oh, there you go. There you go. Okay, that, that's not that. It's not that long actually. Forty-five megabytes. Is it done? I think it's done. It, not, it doesn't show me the minutes or seconds, so I'm assuming okay. it's done. Try and click on it. Try, try, yeah, it's done. It's flickering. Okay, click on it. You have to extract it though. Uh, try right click. Uh, go to downloads. Click on downloads, downloads, yeah. And then uh, right, right click that file right there, right click it. And then go to extract all, extract all, it should be in the top, extract all that one, yeah. And then extract. Okay. And we're just gonna copy it. We're gonna copy um, it to your desktop or somewhere. Okay, so th this right here, I don't know if your professor is going to talk about every one of them, but I'm just giving this to you so that you have like the full pledge file that you can learn how to do data science in Python pretty much. Mm -hmm. And then you can just refer back to these like individual folders and copy and paste like code. That's what I usually do. So what, what I talked about last time was just like data, right? Like, and, and how to define. Mm -hmm. I think we went over like a, how to do a loop and or not a loop, but like an if else statement. Oh, I think yeah, we do, we also did a loop. But I think that's just enough because I want to really jump on like how to do applications with Python. Yeah, because that's I, I only want to know how to do this. You're, you're gonna do that with the uh, you know with your project. Okay, copy mm -hmm. this whole thing. The, this folder right here, co copy this folder, the zero one lessons. Uh, so this whole is just um Copy it, right click, and then copy. And then go to your desktop or wherever you want to put this. Okay. So, Des desktop, yeah. And, and then right click anywhere here. Like anywhere in the desktop. Yeah, not on the phone. Not, not inside of all. Go down and then right click. Go go down and right click right, right there. Yes, right inside. Right. Like inside. No, not there. Like inside. Yeah, right, right there. Right click. And then paste. What happened? I thought you copied it. Hmm. That's what I thought I did. Let me go back. Yeah, try to go back to the file. 
There's the file, right? The lessons right there. Not that one, the one on the left. Yeah, right click that one. And then copy. And then go to desktop. And then like paste, right click, paste. Right click. Paste, there you go. That's the one. That's the one we want. Come on. <laughs> what, why, why is it going there? Try X, X out of this guy. Let me let me do this on request. I'm requesting control. Okay. Can I click on things? Okay, I can. Yeah. Let me let me go back. But that was like a little weird. How come um, it's not copying? Copy and then paste. There you go. That's the one we want. Okay. All right. Okay, 60 seconds. That should be. Okay, that should be good after this. Okay. All right, just so once you download this one, try to go to um, the the Python again, the Python page. Okay, that's good. Go, go to the Python page to, on your um, browser, the Google Chrome. The, the Google Chrome. Yeah, that one. Yeah, and then go to um, you. You see, you see the 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 untitled on the right, like all the way to the right. It says up top. I think it's like second from the from the right. This guy, this guy, click on this guy. I can't see your cursor. Oh, uh, why can't you see it? Let me see. This guy right here. This one. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so from here, go to go to desktop. And then click on the 01 lessons. Yeah, that one, there you go. And then let's let's start. Click on that again, and then go to let's go to Matplotlib first. We'll we'll talk, talk about Map uh, Pandas later on, and then okay. click on zero one intro to Matplotlib. Intro to Matplotlib on the right here. Yeah, that guy. Click on um. Actually, like no, like, go back to that one. Uh, go to Matplotlib. Go go back that guy. Yeah. No, the, the the zero yeah that guy. Click on that, and then go to uh, summary statistics. Yeah, and then click on the first one's in, uh, summary statistics. Yeah, and click on solved, and then samples. All right, cool. Try to follow with me as I um, as I do this. Okay. So let me let me go to my screen now. Since you have the same thing, so you have the same thing, right? Right. Okay. So just run the first block. So you remember running it? Like you just click on this guy, right? Did you run it? Click on the first block. This one, the dependencies. Well, now it's just your screen. What? My screen is not there now. Try okay. to minimize it. Try to minimize. OK, let me minimize more. Okay, so I put mine this way. Yeah, you can actually minimize uh, Zoom if you wanted to. Okay. Did, did you did you uh did, did you click on the dependencies? Let me go back. Yes, it's still coming up. Okay, yeah. So I clicked on dependencies. And then like run it. Did you run it? Mm -hmm. What did it say? Nothing? Uh, it says read in the lab temperature data. 
What? That's what I'm seeing here. Let me see. Share your screen. Mm -hmm. Try to share your screen. I want to see what, what happened. Did you share your screen? Yeah, did. <laughs> I'm getting the same issue now again. <laughs> you didn't find it. You didn't come over. Okay. Your, your, your screen is not sharing for some reason. Oh, boy. Why is it doing that? Something's going on. Let's do side by side mode. Zoom is not responding. That's the problem. Try, try to do your screen again. Screen share. Okay, I see it now. Okay, so what did it do? Oh, wait, it's, it's okay, right? Like try do the um, try running your dependencies. Try running your, the first block. Can, can you hear me? Hello? What is going on? Can you hear me? Why is it doing this? I saw you did that one. Why is it doing that?
pictures. Hello. You logged back. Uh, you 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 got logged out. I don't know what happened. Yeah, everything. It was saying Zoom was not responding. Something like that. I sent you a. Um, a screenshot. Of I, I, I saw that. Okay. I think there's like some issues with connection. Um, okay. Are, are you able to see or like uh, like run the first code block? Were you able to run this guy? Let me see. I don't know where this came from. Do you see it? Let me share my screen. Okay. Share your screen. Oh, that one's fine. Um, th this is just the anaconda prompt. Go back to the sample. That one's fine. It's supposed to happen. Minimize it. Yeah. Go back to the sample. Go go to the top right there. It's a sample. Do, do you know where, where the sample is? Uh, I don't even know where it went down here. It should be in the top, the top of your Chrome right now. Your Google Chrome, we should be at the top. I see it right here. It's sample. Oh, right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. Okay. Um, so yeah, try to run, try to run the same thing as what I'm doing. So this guy, uh, run this guy. Oh, uh, okay. I see. Are you able to run it? Now, now I can be here. Huh? Now I can view my screen. Now I have your screen only. Okay. Okay, I guess we'll just do it this way. So, <laughs> try try to share your screen so that you can do it. Okay, so and one. You see when I try to minimize, yeah. Minimize. You know, like, you don't actually have to minimize it. Just what you could do uh, mm -hmm. is you, you can actually click on the normal, you know, the second button, not the minimize button. Yeah. This little one. Yeah. Can, can you, um, let me share my screen with you and then I'll, I'll show you how you can do it. Okay. So let's see. Do you see, do you see my screen? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to show you like how I usually do this. So like, let me just put this all the way up. I'm gonna show you the zoom. Oh, shit. I don't I don't know why this, this is so. This... I, I don't I don't I don't know why. You know how like in here there's like two buttons. Click mm -hmm. on this guy, um, this guy, and then you can actually do this and put it like on the side. You know, I can uh, I can tell you. Try to share your screen. Hmm. 
Mm, okay. And I click on, let me, let me see. Click on the Zoom. You know, let, never mind. Let's just let's just go with this. Try try to maximize your screen, and then I'll, we'll just run through it. So uh, so the first one right there, the dependencies. Try running that one. Mm -hmm. Try running that first one. Yeah. So. Try so to... when I put my cursor here, I'm supposed to. You you don't have to you don't have to in Python you don't have you don't have to highlight what you're running you, okay. you just have to click on the cell and then on the top um, you can either go on the top and and click run that guy and then it ran it right and then how do you know it ran um, because it shows it to you on the left okay it doesn't run all of them it only runs like each code block one at a time so on the next one. Click on the next code block. The other one, the other one. The, this the, one. The second this, one. The second one. Yeah, click on run. Oh, yeah. okay. So it runs it every code block. Oh. It doesn't run the whole thing. Um, you could make it run the whole thing, but um, let's not do that right now. So, okay, okay. Let, let's, let me just explain it because um, I wanted to actually explain this, not just to run it. Right. So on the set, on the, when it says read in the LAX temperature data, Mm -hmm. Like what it's doing is kind of similar to what you what we did with R. Uh, let me let me do some annotation. Do you know what we did with R? Like you know this yeah, when you created uh, when you created a sub a subset there. Oh, okay. Let me just uh, mark it. So you know this guy right here. Mm -hmm. So like you know how this guy says PD. So this PD is the same as actually why don't i just control here let me just control okay good so this pd right here mm -hmm. so like this pd is uh th this one is pandas so we're, this is right here is a pandas so yes, pandas, pandas. Is, a, is alias is pd right now we're not mm -hmm. It's easier to write. Mm -hmm. And then like, do you remember when R, uh, to read a CSV, we did like dot read CSV, or just read CSV. Here you mm -hmm. have to do the same thing. You do read underscore CSV. Oh, okay. so now we have to add the PD. Yeah, the PD is the pandas. Okay. Yeah, it's the, it's the alias for pandas. Does it make sense that it's an alias? We could just not make an alias, but I think it's it's too long. Does it does it make sense that it's an alias of pandas? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you do PD and read that CSV, the next the one thing you put in here is like where your look the location of your file. So the location of your file is in resources, right? Kind of similar to what we had before in in R. Mm -hmm. And then in there, you put in like the LAX temperatures, that CSV. This is the CSV that I want to read. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Does this make sense, this part right here? It's kind of similar to what we did before. This dot, 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 um, you don't actually need this per se. Because uh, uh, like, let, let me just run it without the dot, dot, dot. I don't know why they have that one. Uh, I guess you needed that one. So if you put dot dot dot, it doesn't it, it doesn't matter. You don't you don't have to put in like the, the rest of uh, the the location of your file, because you know how like this thing we put this in desktop, right? Mm -hmm. So if you put dot 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 here, it's it's just gonna like assume like where where in the folder that we're at currently, which is desktop, right? We're in the desktop folder. Mm -hmm. And then you just have to put in like where this is. So when you put in like a backslash or a forward slash, you're saying that this is inside resources. 
Yeah, I think that's what mm -hmm. we have right inside resources. So if Good. you want, if you want here, you go to, um, well, you know, obviously, where, where are we? We're in summary. You go, you go here, and he says resources here, right? Yeah. And in the resources, you have this LAX temperature CSC. Mm -hmm. So that's what it's saying. You're current. You're in the current folder where this guy is, and you go to resources and LAX temperature CSV. Yeah. Mhm. Mm and then the next thing here, um, it, this is just showing. Okay, I want to get. Uh, maybe before we do that, let me just visualize what we did. So, you have this temperature that uh, DF, right? This data frame. Mhm. Mm and let's actually visualize it and see what's inside. So you have all these guys, right? You have the index right here. You have the station where um, whatever station you, you recorded the temperature in. You have the date when you recorded it. And then the, the report type, whatever this, this numbering is. But the main thing here is this column right here, this hourly dry bulb temperature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this hourly dry bulb temperature is uh, what you want to get. You don't want everything, right? You only want this guy, right? You only want this column, right? Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, you, you have to, the one thing that you want to do is, um, and what I'm doing here is uh, when, I, when I put in the hashtag, it, I'm not running it, I'm commenting it. So what you have to do is you have to filter your data frame. So your data frame is a, this, this guy, right? The temperature DF, that's your data frame. Mm -hmm. So when you put in like how you filter, like you want to only get the this column is you have to put in this bracket thing, mm -hmm. this uh you know the square bracket, kind of like what we did in R, and then the one thing you put inside is the name of your column. And what's the name of the column? This hourly dry bulb temperature. So that's what I'm doing here, right? Mm -hmm. And then so if you look at this, I'm filtering the I only want this column. And I want to assign it to temperatures. Does that make sense? And let's try to um, let's try to visualize what's in there. So this one doesn't look very um, much attractive. So what I usually do is I do this to frame. Oops. There you go. To frame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what we got, right? We filtered out everything. But what we did before was um, this guy, and then, and then what we wanna, what we have now is um, this guy. Yeah. Does that make sense? What what, what I did here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now that we have temperatures by itself, uh, what you wanna do is um, what we did before is try to get the mean, median, and then mode, right? I think this mode one um, doesn't really work. It's not giving me the one I want. So let's not talk about it. Let's just talk about the median and the mean. Yeah, okay. So for the mean and the median, um, how you do it in Python is you have to look at pi, uh, NumPy. So if you take a look at this, there's NumPy. This is the library called NumPy. Um, and then so you assign it a variable. And then you have to call out NP because that's what we that, that's what we assigned it. Instead of NumPy, we called it an NP. Right here, we, we called it NP, right? Mm -hmm. For short, as an alias. So when you put an alias here, you just put NP, and then whatever function you want to assign it or you want to use is mean. But then when you say, when you when you type in NP that mean, you have to give it a, an input of what you're gonna get the mean out out of. And what, what was our input? This guy, right? Mm -hmm. Out of the temperatures. Yeah. Really? And this is just an example. You know, I'm just showing you right now so that, like, if someone, if you guys need to do this for your project, you know how to get the mean. So, um, so what you could do is you put the temperatures inside, right? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, in uh, in Python, um, you you always want to look at like what you did, so. You know, after you assign it, try to type, you know, that again, and see if you get the number. So that's the number right there. Yeah. Right. Okay. 
And then like another way would be like printing something, not, not just a number, maybe printing like some phrase, like the mean temperature at the LAX airport is this. And this is what you do, you, you type in print and then you, you type in this whole thing, uh, you know, whatever uh, verbiage you wanna put, but you have to put an F here. And that, that's just something that you have to remember. And then whatever that variable you define to, to, uh, to get this NP.mean of temperatures, you put it inside curly braces like this guy. And then what happens if you look at the bottom, if I look at the bottom, um, it says right here, the mean temperature at LX airport is a number, yeah? Does that make sense? Yes. I'm just gonna put a period there. And kind of similar to the, the median one. So the median one, uh, the only difference is now you're, getting, you're gonna change mean into median. Everything else is the same. So this is very simple. So this this one, it, you know, the median is a uh, fifty-seven. It's not the same as the mean. I think it's a little bit skewed. So, um, so with that, uh, it's kind of similar. You print it. You know what you know what we have here. I'm just gonna not print that guy. So we just do this. That's it, right? That makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And now let's try to graph it. Uh, so remember we did histograms in R. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So in, in Python, how you do histograms is really simple. It's like not even uh, that hard. But what you have to use is matplotlib now. You have to use matplotlib. And that's why we use um, we imported it here, matplotlib, high plot. Oh, so that's like the ggplot of R. Yes. So matplotlib is ggplot uh, of R. And then, like, and then so, and then you know what we use PLT here as the alias. So it's so simple. All you have to do is call it out PLT, and then the function is dot his. You don't even have to spell out histogram. It's just dot his. Mm -hmm. And the only and the only thing you have to give it is the same thing as what we've been giving, is the temperatures, right? This guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's it. After after you do that, it counts it as like a histogram. And then you know, you, if you want that X label, you do plt that X label. And you type in you know whatever inside here, and that that goes here. And a plt Y label, and it goes here. And then um, I don't know why. Let me see what this does first. Then if you print it, uh, it wants it's showing that it gives you the p-value. This last part right here gives you the p-value. Remember the p-value if it's if it's less than it's like 0 0.05. Mm -hmm. It gives you this t-value. This is the t-value. But we don't really need that one. Um, if you want to show your plot, all you have to do is plt that show. That's it. It's just this guy. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. Okay. And like, there's a bunch of other ones besides um, doing all those. You could also do var. And then like, so variance, is, that's our var, var. And you can do standard deviation, np.std. Yeah. And then I guess for, for a Z score, you actually you can actually do the Z score here. Is um you use STS? STS is not uh, it's just another one. It's called SciPy. So besides using uh, NumPy, we use SciPy now, or Stats, some other ones. SciPy and uh, NumPy are like the two that you want to use in, in terms of statistics. Matplotlib is like ggplot, and then when you're when you're trying to use uh or, or clean up your data frame. To, it's kind of like tdverse. Uh, you have to use pandas. We use what? Pandas. Oh, pandas. Yeah, pandas is um how you import the data frames. Did you uh, and then like matplotlib is how you create plots from those. And then I think um for now that's um that's a good start. Uh, maybe you know 
before before our next session since i gave you this can, do you, you want to like go through these guys yeah mm -hmm. like you know like we, we we finished this guy the interest to summary statistics maybe go to like this guy and go to uh, solve and click, click on this and then i don't know why it's loading so long And then you know, kind of like go through, go along with it again. Mm -hmm. Like just run run each one, and kind of like play around with like all these different, uh, you know, all these different commands. Hmm. I don't know why I'm saying so long. Okay, that now it ran. Okay, that's good. Let's click on this one. And here, this is kind of like a box plot, right? Box. Mm -hmm. box yeah. and you have also like this guy. This is just to sort things, you know. Like you have your data frame, right? This times is your your data frame that you created. Yeah. And then you're just trying to, uh, like, this is just a sample data frame. It's, it may not be the, like a CSV, but you, you can sort your data frame like this. And then here, it's the same thing. Let's actually get something. So if you want to do like temperatures again, um, and you want to get like just a, the column of hourly dry bulb temperature, you do the mm -hmm. same thing. And then like when you, uh, when you plot it, you're plotting the, um, the temperatures, right? As a box plot. Yeah. So this is all you have to do. AX1 box plot temperatures. And because this AX1 is, you don't actually have to do this. You, all you have to do is, um, what is AX1? Did we call it something? It was PLT. There's another way of doing it. This is another way. But um, uh, that's, uh, and how you get quartiles is, uh, for example, this one, you, you you do temperatures because that's your data frame. And then you do dot quantile and you want to get the 25th uh, qu uh, quantile or quartile. Uh, you just put dot 25 and then you want to get the, the, the middle 0.5 and then you want to get the 75th, 0.75. And then, and then you just do that. You just assign them the lower quartile, upper quartile. And if you want to get the IQR, you just minus the upper from the lower, right? Right? Okay. And like, maybe let's just take a look at one more and then we'll call it, uh, let's look at maybe this one. Let's look at this one. Summary stats. So for this one, like uh, kind of similar, we have pandas. What do we use pandas for? For cleaning data sets. Uh, matplotlib, what do we use matplotlib for? For graphs, graphics. And, then, and NumPy and SciPy, what do we use it for? That's the one we use to calculate like mean okay, and good. stuff like that. Yep, okay. It's always just good to know them in like Python. So the very first thing is we want to import the data, right? So kind of similar, you do this, you import the data like this. And then when you want to get like some some of the data, not the whole thing, you, you could do you could have done this, like you could have just visualize the whole thing like this. But that, that's a lot of data right here. If you want to visualize only like the top uh, five, you can do that head. It gives you the top five, right? One, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. Remember we start we start zero with Python. Zero Python. And when you want to get the bottom five, you can do tail. So the bottom five. But this gives you a lot of good things. House age, average room. These are all the labels. We're going to do something with this. So what if you wanted to um, determine which measure of central tendency is most appropriate to describe the population? Uh, you know, let's try to print them. Let's try to print what the median is, what the, me 
the mo the mean and the modes are. So how you can do that, like if you had like the, you know, remember you, you can just take one of these guys, right? You can filter them. So if you wanna like, first of all, plot the histogram of population. Yeah, this guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to feed PLT that his a column, right? So how do you get a column from a data frame? How do you do that? You you, you, you have to create a data frame first, right? A data frame first. And and then uh, you put in the the square brackets, right? Mm -hmm. And inside the square brackets, what do you put? What do you put inside the square brackets? The values. The the name of your of your column. Yeah, uh, sorry. The 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 name the variable. The variable of your column, right? Of the column. Yeah, always remember that one. So, when you have your data frame, this is the one that you imported from the CSV. Mm -hmm. When you want to visualize uh, any of these guys. Maybe I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So maybe if you want house age, like all you have to do is like house age like that, right? And then like to make it look good, you put two frame. So house age, right? Mm -hmm. What if you wanted population? You just do population right here. Yeah. I think there's a way for you to um, know the, the name of the labels. Um, I think that's not the one. There was a way. I'll just show you later. I'll show you that to you later once we get to it. But the the best way is just to look at these guys. Okay, the variables. Yeah, just these guys. Okay. And then if you want to know like the size of your variable, just put in like shape. Why is it not? Oh, it's probably because it's not data, data. Oh, it's a tuple? Hmm, that's weird. Oh, it's not callable because it's a tuple. Hmm. Okay, sure. And then so, Inside here, um, like, like, you know, once you know what let, column you want, just put that inside the, the histogram. And then you, you should be able to plot it like this. And then once you put in like the X level population, Y level counts, just put it like that way. And then if the moment that you call out that show, this is when it graphs it. So in order to get like the mean and the median, uh, all you have to do is, for example, what if you wanted to change this to like house age, I guess. And let's actually change all of this. Uh, and for, for the one that you guys are going to be doing, it's going to be related to me, you know, medical stuff. So like you know, it's going to be like all the labels, you're going to have to look at that. And then I pick the one that you can do some statistics on. Mm -hmm. so like this on house age. There you go, it's different, right? And then it gives you like, you know, this different one right here. Oh, it's actually on the bottom right here. <laughs> That's funny. So mean, median, and mode. And then, you know, quartiles, same thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then you could also get the, um, this outlier one is a little bit um, difficult. I'll explain this next time. But you can get the outliers just by doing this. And you, you can even do like the, a scatter plot. So how you do that is PLT that scatter, and then like the uh, what you what you have to do here is obviously you have to give it two different variables, right? So you just do like longitude and then like latitude, 
whatever variable you want, but yet you have to make sure you're giving it a column. So this is how you do you do the column. Let's just, let's try to practice what you what you're doing here. Okay. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Let's um, let's do this again. Do you want to do this like sometime Monday? Yeah, let's let's meet Monday. Okay, and then uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna add credit. So. Okay, and then like from from Monday, can you send me your new homework because I didn't receive it? Yeah. Okay. All right, have a good night. Yeah, yeah. Um, All right, thank you. If you have any other questions, cool. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Yep. Mm -hmm.